Madagascar, and Reunion. Two French-speaking islands in the Indian Ocean. Separated by just over 900 kilometers, these two islands have very different cultures, yet face the same types of crime. Alcohol abuse, theft, stabbings. On both islands, special response units work tirelessly to stamp out the crime, tarnishing their picture-perfect image. It's the weekend on Reunion, time to relax. We're in St. Paul, on the western side of the island. The island's second largest commune is home to the most festive locations and approximately 100,000 inhabitants. Here, on De L'Hermitage and St. Gilles beaches, residents party, dance, and drink. The St. Paul police has a specialized unit, the PSIG the Gendarmerie's Surveillance and Response Platoon. The unit is getting ready to head out on patrol. The officers are especially well equipped to ensure there are no violent outbursts. We have our weaponry provision. We have 25 cartridges and a nine millimeter pistol, as you can see here, and a baton and a pair of handcuffs. So that's yours? That's mine, yeah. There's a number. The number on the weapon corresponds to an officer. David is the unit leader. He knows that any issues tonight will likely be linked to partying and alcohol. A few minutes into his patrol, the vehicle traveling in front of him suddenly changes direction. The officers find it suspicious. Good evening. Please cut the engine. Cut the engine. Good evening, police. Can I see your driver's license, please? The driver has his license and registration, but at night, the officers always run breathalyzer tests, just in case. Good, can you breathe into here, please, sir? Good. Positive. The car is immediately immobilized. This man won't be driving home tonight. He did a U-turn in front of us, so we pulled him over. Now we're taking him to the station to check his blood alcohol level. Anything between 0.25 and 0.39 is an offense, and anything above that's a crime. So you have zero tolerance for drunk driving? Of course, with everything that's going on at the moment, with all the fatal accidents and injuries, we can't do nothing. Doing nothing isn't an option. The breathalyzer test was positive. The man will be taken straight to the station to have his exact blood alcohol level measured. Go on, sit down in the back, on the left in the back. In France, the blood alcohol limit is 0.05. This driver is not only over that, but after several reading, his blood alcohol level rises. It's above 0.08. It's a crime. The officers carry out some checks and realize that the man has previously had his license revoked for driving under the influence. As a re-offender, he'll have to spend the night in the cell. Reunion has zero tolerance for drink drivers. On the island, there are approximately 60 road accidents per month and 10% are fatal. Alcohol abuse is such a big problem here that the police regularly roll out large-scale operations. Tonight, in the south, a breathalyzer roadblock has been set up. Just pull over there on the right. Officers are stopping drivers in the middle of the street for mandatory breathalyzer testing. A positive result and the driver is immediately arrested. The test was positive. The driver now has to breathe into the apparatus once again, but this time from the comfort of the police van. The device provides the exact level of alcohol per liter of air exhaled.
Zero point four one. If you'd gone under zero point four, you'd have got a ticket. But this was a crime. Zero point forty one. In other words, 0.82 grams of alcohol in his blood. The officer confiscates the driver's license while the offender awaits the judge's verdict. So we've immobilized his vehicle. He's called someone to come collect it, and he'll have to appear before a judge at a later date. And then within 72 hours, he'll have his judgment. He'll certainly have his license suspended. In just one and a half hours, 300 drivers have been breathalyzed, a lightning raid operation to prove the police have zero tolerance for this type of behavior. Okay, good night. And Tananarivo, the capital of Madagascar, also known as the city of 1,000 hills. Home to 1.6 million inhabitants, it's the country's political and economic capital. Located in the center of the island, former kings chose this location for its abundance of marshes, perfect for growing rice. Today, the city is bursting at the seams, and with masses of people comes crime. When night falls over Antananarivo, police patrol units come out in force. At the central police station, officers are preparing for a specific operation. It's Vendredi Magnifique. The Malagasy will be out drinking tonight. We're closing the bars in Ambupu. Commander Herman heads up the urban police. Tonight, he's the one who enforces the law. It's 2030. In 30 minutes, all the bars have to be closed. We're concerned about the risk of violent outbursts linked to alcohol consumption. So we start by going out to the bars and limiting consumption. We'll close all the bars quite early so that the people that are a bit tipsy won't get into fights or commit any burglaries or anything else. So that's what we're doing tonight. And to enforce the law, the Antananarivo police force doesn't skimp on resources. A whole squadron heads out into the night. A lot of people go out on Friday nights. There are a lot of people. So we need a lot of officers on duty to contain any situations. In total, close to 20 officers will patrol the streets. They hit the mark with the first seemingly closed bar. The shutters are down because they're trying to make it look like it's closed, but there are definitely people in there. Drinking time is over. You can keep drinking at home, but not here. This bar is full to the rim, and the empty bottles prove that the customers are doing a good job at drinking past the authorized time. The section leader summons the barkeeper. Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., my office. It's the same situation in every bar on the street. The legal closing time in Madagascar is 9 p.m., as established by municipal decree. So drinking and selling alcohol in bars or in public after hours is illegal. Given how many people bend the law, large numbers of officers are required to prevent any outbursts. The officers pull people into line for even the slightest offense. In fact, Commander Herman has just heard someone shouting insults. Did you insult us? What did you say? Do you think you're a tough man? Uh, don't provoke me. You think you're a tough guy? I'll take you in. We'll see how you like that. Given how the situation is taking a turn for the worst, a friend comes to the drunk man's rescue. 
No, Mr. Commissioner, please don't take him in. Forgive him, please. What's going on here? Cut it out. Everyone stop. You can't drink in the street. Who sold you these drinks? This is your last warning. Go home, everyone. Later in that evening, the officers discover a nightclub with free-flowing alcohol located above a bar. The owner tries to explain, for better or for worse. What time are you allowed to stay open until? Uh, normally 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Yes, 10 p.m., not 10 o'clock in the morning. Well, it's 12.30 now. I know, I understand, but it's because of the group that's here. There's an association meeting here today. I don't know where they came from, but they're here, and they said they wanted to have some fun. They wanted to have some drinks in this establishment. And you allowed them to stay even though you don't have the right? Yes, yes, yes. Do you have the right to do that? No, 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 we don't have the right. But a long time ago, why didn't you just close the door? Yes, I had closed it. That's why I said to them, you better leave because it's already 10.15. That's not the way it looked to us. But the owner can't even show his alcohol permit to the police. So he's immediately taken to the station. At the station, the section leader registers the bar owner's details. Uh, we're going to put him in the violin. We're taking him into custody. The violin is the term used in Madagascar for detention cell. The bar owner will spend the night at the station while he waits for a friend to bring his alcohol license in. It's Saturday night in Reunion. We're with the Gendarmerie Mobile, a unit from mainland France in Reunion, helping out David and the other PSIG units during the summer. At night, response units patrol the beaches. They're full of drunken revelers and most probably pickpockets. Good evening. All right, have a nice night. Thank you, you too. The officers spot some teens on bikes without any headlights. They're stopped in their tracks. Do you have your ID with you? No. Nothing at all? No. Neither of you. Do you know each other? Yeah, we're friends. Yeah? Okay. You're going to tell my colleague who you are. We're just doing a simple ID check. Hey, it's me, the warrant officer. Could you just do an ID check on two individuals? Personnel at the station checks the two teens' records and they come up clean. Okay, that's great. Thanks. Bye. These two teens were riding around without any lights. That's why we stopped them. Then we checked their IDs because we get a lot of youngsters that rob vehicles. They get into cars and then leave on their bikes up Saint-Gilles. They were carrying bags with them, so we thought they might be carrying something to smash windows. In fact, theft from motor vehicles has been a serious problem here in Saint-Denis for some time now. The officers are always on the lookout for suspicious activity around the beaches. The two teens weren't carrying anything to smash windows, but the officers do discover something else. What? What you got there? Oh, is it a joint? What's it for, partying? The teen is carrying joints. In other words, ready to smoke Where'd you buy it? From a friend? A friend? You know him. What's his name? I can't tell you that. You can't tell me. We found two small joints that we'll destroy. We don't charge people for two joints. So we're destroying them, like usual. Don't come around here again, okay? Are you already known for narcotics? Do you have a drug record? No. Maybe the drug squad knows you. Okay, are you going to meet up with your friends now? No. No? Okay, have a quiet night. By have a quiet night, 
The officer actually means you better not get up to anything. We're watching you. By running spot checks like these, the police can prevent thefts from motor vehicles and drug use. That was local product. We call it zamal, same thing as cannabis, weed or grass. We find it all the time. It's really common. There we just found two joints. That's a small amount, a really small amount. But we regularly find it. There are lots and lots of users. I'd say about 50% of teens smoke it. A little further down the beach, there's a surprise laying in wait for the officers. Go on, follow him, follow him. He's naked. Hurry. Stop, stop, stop. Good evening, sir. They stole my towel. They were just joking around. They took my towel. Who? Who's the guilty party? Uh, it's okay. Oh, it's okay, but there are children around here and you're running around naked. Can you see? Look at the children. I'm really sorry. They stole my towel. They were just joking around. They didn't know there were kids okay, here. Okay, you can do that when you're alone, but not when there are children around. I was running to get my towel. I'm really sorry. Don't do it again. No, I'm really embarrassed. Go on. Thanks. Good night. Bye. Don't do it again. Nobody got hurt. It wasn't an exhibitionist trying to show himself to children. Just a young man who's the butt of a joke. Well, that's a first. It was pretty funny. Yeah, quite. You see all kinds of things on Saturday nights. Spice of life. A streaker. Chasing a streaker, that's a first. In front of the car. In Antananarivo, the night is drawing to a close. Under the effects of alcohol, people forget how to uphold the law, and some commit unforgivable acts. Commander Herman has been called to a case that often goes unreported. A girl is near the railroad tracks in Kilabao. Someone in the area stopped them. We're going to find out what happened. The commander joins the unit already on the scene. The officers explain what happened and inform him that the is being held by the military police. For the time being, they don't want to hand him over. In principle, they won't hold him long. They'll probably just check his identity and then send him to us tomorrow morning at the latest. Uh, tell us what happened, ma'am. There were two of them. I'd, I'd just been for a drink near the bar. I walked past the White House over there, next to the furniture shop, and I was going to take a shortcut across the railroad track. They pulled me into the dark corner there. I tried to scream, but they were holding a knife to my neck, and every time I tried to scream, they pressed it harder into my neck. Commander Herman takes his time listening to the victim. Unfortunately, there are not many rape victims out there willing to report this type of violence. Some report it, some don't, because they're scared of what might happen to them, or because they're ashamed of being raped. That's why it's only sometimes reported, and sometimes we don't find out about it. The commander firmly believes that this type of behavior is directly linked to binge drinking. So we'll take the victim to the station, to the vice squad, and then to the Child Protective Service. Our involvement in the case ends there. They'll continue the investigation. 
The night is far from over, and the worst is yet to come. We received a call from the emergency squad about an attack in a home. Apparently, there are two victims. One of them has been stabbed in the neck. We're going with the rapid response team to see what's going on, what we can do, and then we'll decide how to proceed. The murder happened mere minutes ago on the third floor of a residential building, right in the city center. There's blood on the ground floor, most likely from the attacker. Commander Herman speaks with Liva, the head of the rapid response team. It was a very violent attack. I can see that there are at least 20 stab wounds. It was violent. Commander Herman heads to the roof in search of the attackers. The blood starts here. There are traces of blood on the roof, too. There must have been at least two attackers, and they left in different directions. I think that's the weapon used to stab the victim. What's he looking for? The knife used in the attack. Commander Herman won't find the bloodied knife tonight. At the crime scene, the criminal unit is already investigating. Well, we aren't sure yet. We can't confirm if it's an attack or someone settling a score. Oh, it was clearly premeditated murder. When I arrived, I found him there. And nothing's been stolen. Everything of value is still there. I'm sure of it. Nothing has been taken. This man is the victim's neighbor. He's certain that it was a settling of scores. Following the investigation, his theory is confirmed. A family dispute linked to inheritance is at the heart of the crime. It won't be hard for the investigators to find the murderers. We're at the Saint-Gilles police station in Reunion. The weekend is drawing to a close and Alexander's unit is out on patrol. He's not been in his car long when he receives a call. There's a family conflict on the beach and someone's waving a knife around. So we're going to Choca Bleu. Can you give me any more information? Yes, a witness reported that the individual with the knife has returned to the scene on the beach below Choca Bleu. He's wearing navy blue pants and a blue short-sleeved shirt. That's the information and the witness's location. Okay, is the witness waiting for us there? Affirmative, the woman is on the scene. Alcohol, domestic incidents, stabbings. These are the main issues plaguing the island. A few months ago, an old woman was hacked to pieces by an unknown individual. The Gendarmerie takes all threats very seriously, especially on weekends. It's the weekend. It's the alcohol talking. Often there are family get-togethers, and then old disputes come back up to the surface. Here, the weekend equals alcohol and fighting. Yeah, we have it. We're arriving on the scene. At the scene, Alexander joins another team, the Special Response Detachment, or DSI. The officers have already started collecting information. Yeah, he was coming back and forth. And he was bothering everyone. Yeah, there's another group gave me the same description. A bit further down the beach, one of the witnesses informs the officers that the attacker is still in the area. So you haven't found him? No, not yet. He was sitting there, 
I think he realized afterwards that it was closed. He's on foot, he doesn't have a car. This woman witnessed the whole scene when the fight broke out. She confirms how violent the man is. Her own son was threatened. I know that the woman ran off and my son took the baby. I don't think he liked that my son took the baby from the woman. He was looking to start a fight with my son. Okay, ma'am, thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. You might find him on the street. We'll see. So he's elusive, this guy. I think as soon as he knew we were coming, he left. It's easy here to go up to the street and hide. So we'll stay in the area and see if we can find him. It's a known family. We'll be able to identify them if we need to. Alexander and his unit cordon off the area and look around to see if they can find the suspect. Good evening, sir. Hello. You should head home. Good evening, sir. They soon find an individual matching the witness's description. Can we talk to you? Thank you for being here. It's good. It prevents crime. Please, we're going over there. Move over there. Of course, sir. Where do you live? Me? I've just left home. Move over there. I've decided to stay here. But where do you live? I live here on the beach. Okay. Can you show me what you've got in your bag, please? There's nothing in there. I just want to see. I've done nothing wrong. We're just checking, sir. Go ahead, check, sir. Will you show us? You're officers. You can open it. You're authorizing me to check? Yes, I'm authorizing you. So, we're looking for a man with a knife. Clearly, it's not you. Ah, oh, it's the second time. You resemble him a little bit, but clearly, you're not the guy. I look a bit like a villain, is that it? No, no, it's not that. Here. Uh, enjoy your night, sir. I am grateful to the officers for their presence and for protecting me. This guy, he's the beach mascot. The individual we just spoke to looked a bit like the description, but he'd already been stopped an hour ago, and it's not him. They won't find the wanted man tonight. But the officers soon identify the man and finds his address. The following day, he'll receive a serious warning. The gendarmerie is watching him. Back in Antananarivo at the station, Leva is the head of the RRU, a rapid response unit. In his truck, with 10 other officers, he heads out on patrol, responding to situations that could quickly escalate such as armed attacks, stabbings, and violent fights. We received a call about a situation in Antopena. Apparently there's a fight and it's got something to do with electricity. It seems to be getting quite heated. People are throwing stones. We're going to see what's happening. The fight is in a slum alongside the market. It's a maze of streets, but Leva soon finds the right path and the victim. They attacked us from this window. They hit the window. My wife was there. When they couldn't find me, they threatened my wife. Said if she didn't find me, they'd kill her. It's the people that live behind there that have a problem with us. You see the house up there? The suspected attackers are playing a game of cat and mouse with the victim and disappear as soon as he arrives home. There's no sign of them now, so Leva gives the victim his cell phone number so he can contact them as soon as they come back. For now, the team is back on patrol. They've only been gone minutes when the victim calls Leva. The attackers are back and have started throwing stones again. To prevent them from getting away for a second time, Leva posts his second patrol unit at the slum's exit. He's going to the entrance. They should have the attackers in a vice. Uh, apparently it's just beside the house. Yes, it's just beside the house. Let's go around the other side. Yeah. 
Shoot us, shoot us. They're going to have another one. We're coming up to the bridge. Over. 10 4, we're almost at the entrance. The victim has established where the stones are being thrown from. Without making himself visible, he's going to approach the attacker's hideout. The officers are surprised to learn that there are two female attackers, a young child, and finally, a man. Where is this child's father? Hey, I'm speaking to you. Where is the father? Uh, I don't know where the father is. Yeah, there were three of them. Two ran off, but then they came back. They threatened my life and said they'll send my body to kill ER. And she said she'd slash my wife's face. The attackers are formally identified and will now have to explain themselves from the comfort of a cell at the station. Leva arrests the man and the woman, but not the young mother. I haven't arrested the woman because it's very complicated to bring in a mother and child. Because of the Human Rights Act, a mother who's breastfeeding? Even though the neighbors have identified her as one of the attackers, we'll see in the investigation whether we need to arrest her. And if we do, we'll come back. At the station, the attackers are quickly becoming ashamed of their actions. The young woman seems to suddenly realize what she's done and breaks down. Upstairs, the events need to be recorded. Everything that happened, the names and the victim's statement. Here, the police officers don't let anyone get away with intimidation. It's a widespread problem on the island, and they take all cases very seriously. Le Port Reunion. Located in the west, this city is one of the island's poorest. Young criminals often head to the upper parts of the city, where it's easier to commit theft. Yesterday morning, there was an opportunistic burglary in an office where the door had been left ajar. The officers have just been put on the case. Okay, so we've got several checks, checkbooks, many checkbooks, around 3,000 euros cash, lots of cash, and a laptop computer. Two youngsters committed the burglary. One is well known in Le Port. He was spotted by witnesses who clearly identified him. We're going to request backup because it's quite a rough area. It's an estate and there are lots of residents. You can't see where people might come out from. There are high-rise buildings and we don't know who might jump out at us, so we prefer to take precautions and prevent any incidents. We don't want it to get out of control. In Reunion, like in mainland France, the Gendarmerie is responsible for rural zones and the police is responsible for urban zones. The theft was committed in the Gendarmerie's jurisdiction, but it was committed by thieves from the police's jurisdiction. So they're going to request help from the station. They meet the officers from the BAC, the anti-crime unit there. They know these areas well. I'll let you check with my colleagues. We're going to conduct a search and then we'll see. Just to let you know, we stopped him at 12.30 at the Zoop. Yes, that's what we heard. Do you want us to come with you? Yeah, because we don't know much. Okay, let's go. The officer spotted the wanted teen a few hours ago. Jeff, the head of the BAC, knows the area and the people that live here well. They were well known, huh? I uh, don't know if I'd say they're well known, but we know who they are. Why'd you intervene? Well, we were just stopping youngsters in a lobby who were making it hard for residents to get through. You need at least two gendarmerie and two police vehicles to penetrate a vulnerable area like this one. Here, strength in numbers prevents any outbursts. There's only one way into the estate, through a staircase, and it's a death trap. The young man's stepfather answers the investigator's questions. He's not very comfortable. His dad came. The son was here, but his dad came. He took his son away. 
Clearly, the wanted teen isn't home. But the officers have a search warrant and are still going to search his room for the stolen items. We're going to have to have a look, sir. Can you show us to his room? Hello? Hello? Oh, where is it? And this here? Who does this belong to? All this stuff? Is it yours? It's his. But you said he doesn't live here. All his clothes are here. Whose is this? I don't know. Who does this belong to? I don't know, maybe his dad's? It might be his dad's. It might be. These laptop bags, all these bags. Computers, video game consoles, lots of items stored in bags that lead the officers to believe that they're not for personal use. They'll have to closely examine everything. I'll take a picture of the serial number to see. All the items are documented. The vice is closing in on this young criminal. Outside, the officers cordon off the area to stop crowds from forming and to prevent any outburst, which are common in estates like this one. They leave the minute the search is over. They can't risk being attacked. To find the teen, the officers now head towards where he was stopped by the BAC at lunchtime. They're still in a high-risk area. Here, cars are set ablaze left and right. More burnt-out vehicles. They keep taking them away, but there's still more. Jeff knows the teen they're looking for and soon recognizes his brother and takes him to one side. Now they have the brother. They'll get him to take them to his father's house. The officers are hoping to find the thief there. No answer. There's nobody here. Another dead end, but they know who they're looking for and have warned his brother and his parents. He'll have to turn himself in. Tell him to call the gendarmerie. That'll put an end to this. We know who he is. We want to know why he did it. So tell him to call the gendarmerie. We know who he is. We know he'll turn himself in sooner or later. You're his big brother. You're supposed to teach him how to behave. You're supposed to tell him. Then he'll understand. OK? Their approach clearly worked. The miner turns himself in a few days later. It's market day in Antananarivo. The city is bursting at the seams with merchants and shoppers. It's also a perfect time for pickpockets and shoplifters to strike. At least two or three thefts are reported each day in the markets. To stamp out this type of crime, the Antananarivo police force regularly runs special operations. <coughs> We have a really bad problem with pickpocketing and shoplifting. So today we're supporting our neighboring precincts. We've been collaborating with them for some time now, every Saturday and on market days. Today, Leva will personally deal with this type of petty crime. He'll patrol with part of his unit in plain clothes, while the rest of the unit, under Commander Jocelyn's orders, keeps their distance. When we do an operation like this, we try to take special care with the way we dress so that no one thinks we're cops. We try to blend in with the merchants and shoppers. It's really important because if one of us is spotted, we're all spotted. They're fast. They've got lookouts all over the place. It's very hard to fool these guys. They're good at spotting officers. Leva discreetly enters the market with half a dozen other officers in plain clothes. At the same time, 
Jocelyn patrols around the market and the back streets in the slums. Jocelyn is focusing on this area because this is where offenders will run to if they manage to steal something in the market. The slums are also prime locations for drug deals, in particular In Malagasy law, drug dealing is a serious offense, so officers use every possible opportunity to prevent it. This is just a simple search. We're always on the lookout for They bring it into bars like this and sell it. Following the bar search, a man suddenly makes off. Jocelyn and his officers block his exit immediately. A few minutes later, the man is stopped and searched. Spread your arms. Bingo. They found what they were looking for. Let's see. These are rolling papers, used with At the same moment in time, Leva calls Jocelyn. So, they've caught two. Two pickpockets. The officers in plain clothes. Leva and his group of officers split up into groups of three and managed to catch this young man in white. They've also caught two others, accomplices. Pickpockets often work in groups to protect each other and to watch out for the police. Unluckily for them, their plan didn't work today. They're loaded into the truck, away from the crowd, as they could violently turn on the thieves. What did you steal? Some pants. Just two pairs of pants. It's market day. The thieves don't choose what they steal. They just take whatever they can get their hands on. They only stole pants, but they'll still have to appear before the judge. It might seem harsh, but the Malagasy government is simply trying to stamp out shoplifting and pickpocketing. Increased crime and violence has led to the introduction of a super cop unit, operational 24-7. The GIGN, the Gendarmerie Nationale's response group, trains tirelessly to ensure it's at the top of its game. Sébastien is the unit leader. Twice a week, his unit trains in the most difficult scenarios, ensuring they can neutralize any dangers whenever and wherever. We train in real world conditions, so as close to reality as possible. We wear all our gear so that we're used to all of it, to the uniform, the gloves, everything. It has to feel normal. The first exercise of the day is shooting practice using a long gun. They pass with flying colors. Okay, the shoulder weapon aims for the largest part of the adversary's torso. So we focus on the hand, and with our handguns, we tend to focus on the pelvic area. But it's even harder at night, using night vision goggles, although their efficiency is still very impressive. Following the shooting exercise, the group trains in real conditions in an area held by terrorists. The group always operates with covered faces. As they are an elite unit, they need to keep their identities hidden for the safety of their families and of themselves. 
Enfin, zone d'investigation. We're going to enter the investigation zone in groups of three, with support from the second helicopter, so that we can get into the area where the dangerous adversaries are holed up. For this exercise, a helicopter will collect a group of officers from the roof of a building and bring them to the site. Two helicopters are needed for the mission, one as a rapid response unit and the other as backup to cover the first. To get on the scene as quickly as possible, the officers slide down ropes from the helicopter. For this training exercise, the officers are carrying replica handguns, but they're loaded with red paintball pellets. Since the wave of terrorist attacks on France, the government has increased police numbers across its entire territory, a mission entrusted to Thierry, commander of the GIGN branch. There's no confirmed terrorist threat on Reunion, but that doesn't stop us from preparing for one, because when the day comes, we'll have to be ready. Even on a small island like Reunion, the authorities aren't leaving anything to chance. If a widespread catastrophe does occur, they want to be prepared. At the Antananarivo station, it's mandatory mass physical exercise. Today is a special day. Liva and his team are coming out of a training session to improve the arrest techniques. There's a Frenchman amongst the Malagasy officers. He's a former BAC officer. You have to understand that it's a training program that should take over seven months, and here they've rushed through it in three weeks. Of course, there are some imperfections, but standing before you are people who have devoted themselves entirely. They've given the very best of themselves. Jean-Michel Lègle is the trainer. The rapid response unit is going to demonstrate the rules of the art for the police officials. We're going to show them what we've been doing these past three weeks, all right? We'll see defensive work, grips and thrusts. The French authorities have decided to restore the police's image of a force that relies too heavily on its weaponry. They now want officers to neutralize attackers with bare hands. The idea is that it breathes new life into the force and changes practices. Because the better officers get at these practices, the more easily they'll be able to disarm criminals, working with methods that emphasize restraint and dialogue rather than lethal force. So this is the approach we take. Using force is simply another way to say using firearms. However, for dealing with terrorism, the officers still need to train with assault rifles. For Leva and his unit, this has been a short and very intense training session. 
The training session went well. 36 out of 40 of us finished it. Some people dropped out and someone dislocated his shoulder, but in general it went well. The training exercise wasn't easy for everyone, but most people passed with flying colors. I'm proud, yes. We learned new things, new techniques, and we need them. As situations evolve, as the era evolves, we need to evolve too. I'm really pleased with how it went. Once the jury's congratulations are out of the way, time for a spot of humor. Jean-Michel and Liva have something special planned for the officials. What was that? I was playing a woman who gets out of her car and then some thieves try to steal her bag. And then I surprised them with some of my techniques and we showed what we've learned. We said, we'll finish on a high note. We'll do something to lighten the atmosphere. The exercise went really well. It shows that the training has really been useful and the results are really good. On the islands of Reunion and Madagascar, to prevent escalating violence, patrol officers constantly monitor the streets and respond to the most difficult and risky calls. These two islands in the middle of the Indian Ocean have had their picture-perfect reputations tarnished by crime. But these patrol officers won't let that be their island's fate.